Okay, ready or not, here we go. We are live, I think both on YouTube and Facebook, so welcome. In today's English lesson, we are going to be talking about weather idioms. And we'll also be talking about what an idiom is. Now I see Filippo is here. We just finished with a, a members chat for the last half hour. So it was good to see some people on camera. Thomas, hope you're doing well. Yawen was in on the members chat. Not on camera, but in the chat there. Omron, Yulia, so many familiar names. I hope you are ready to learn some English. I hope you are ready to learn some idioms. Because idioms can really help you sound more like a native speaker. Now, I'm not saying get rid of your accent. Keep your accent. I was just talking to Danny who has a great accent. It's a little bit French. A little bit German. Park. I'm not sure if Park is here, but Park was in our members chat. So keep your accent, but... If you want to sound a little bit more natural, native English speakers will use idioms all the time. And if you know some of these idioms, it will really help you understand what native speakers are saying. And then you might be able to use some of those idioms yourself. So let's first talk about what is an idiom. I think most people know, most languages have their own idioms, but an idiom is when you say something, but that thing is not actually happening. So I would like to talk about two very big words in English and explain them. And I might use these terms throughout the English lesson, so it would be helpful if you knew these two words. For example, literally, literally. Native speakers say literally, literally all the time. So let's talk about what literally means. It means it's actually happening. And I'm going to use an idiom as an example. And when we talk about idioms, it's not actually happening. It's not literally happening. One of the first idioms English learners learn is it's raining cats and dogs. So if it was literally happening, that would be tragic. That would be gross. That would be just awful. Cats and dogs would be falling from the sky. If it were literally happening. So when we talk about idioms, we are talking about figuratively. Figuratively means it's not actually happening. So when it, a native English speaker will say it's raining cats and dogs, it means it's raining really hard out, but there are no cats and dogs falling from the sky, thankfully. Especially if you are an animal lover. That would be horrible. But it's raining cats or dogs, or cats and dogs. To be honest, native speakers don't say that all that often. I know English textbooks love to talk about that idiom, but... Native speakers just don't say it, or they don't say it that often, or maybe older people will say it, but I honestly don't hear that very often in my regular conversations. Pouring, yes, we will talk about pouring soon, but not it's raining cats or dogs. But I thought that was a really good example to start off with because I think most people know it. Indonesia is in the house. Hopefully everybody's doing well there. Freddie Wolf, he's from France. Hope you're doing well. Mahmoud from Mauritania. Hey, Danny. Danny is here. Dan and I, 
just spoke for about a half an hour. Pablo is here. Welcome. I know him. I just saw a picture of him and his sister in the Discord. Well, oh, Audie's here too. Chris is here. Hey, and Park. Park is here. Park only had two or three minutes, but we spoke for a little while. It was good to meet you, Park. All right. Got some idioms for you. I also have um, some pictures for you, which I need to put up here. They were up a minute ago. That's, that's me. And you see there's a big sun behind me. I look a little confused, like, what is going on here? But I think for most YouTube thumbnails, you need to have some kind of look. I'm trying to get better. I, I work on that every morning in front of the mirror, trying to get my perfect YouTube face. Shock. Sometimes it works. But... Oh, oh, P Park, hang on, hang on. I'm sorry, I forgot. Park dropped a super chat before the stream began. Park, thank you so much. It was great to talk to you. Got a little something for you. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Oh, I didn't, I sometimes, when that thing plays, I try to take a, a sip of water. It's not water today. It's energy. Orange energy. I mixed it up before the stream started. So Park, thank you so much for the super chat that you dropped earlier. The next thing I would like to talk about, and you will hear native English speakers say this, save it for a rainy day. Save it for a rainy day. This usually means money, and it's just a little bit of extra money to have some fun with. So the definition there, save something for the future in case you need it. And for the most part, it is going to be money. Now, I'm not sure if you have a piggy bank. A lot of children in the United States will be given a piggy bank. And this is a place where they can keep their extra money to maybe save it. It doesn't have to be rainy for this rainy day. It just means to save it for when you need something or when you want something. There is a difference between wanting and needing. And right now, I want a nice slice of pizza. <sighs> Gooey cheese, nice thick crust, but I don't need it. I just had breakfast. I'm not really hungry. But the, when you save money for a rainy day, it can be for something you want to have a little fun, or it can be something that you need. For example, my wife and I, we are saving up for a new roof for our house. Now, luckily, our roof is really good. It's, it's raining right now and the house isn't leaking. But within the next decade, within the next 10 years, I'm pretty sure we are going to need a new roof on our house. So we are saving some money for a rainy day. We're saving some money for a new roof whenever we need it because it will probably cost a lot of money. We are setting aside some money just in case we need a new roof. That's, and, it, and it does help if it's a rainy day, but it doesn't have to be rainy to save something. So please, let me know in the chat. Are you saving up for something? Are you saving some money for a rainy day? Hmm. Oh, also, I've been talking about it. Jamie and I, we are going to be visiting Brazil 
in April of next year. So we also have a little stash of money. We are saving for Brazil, saving it for a rainy day. Bangladesh is in the house. Oh man, Freddie. Freddie was trying to get into the members chat. It is a little glitchy for some reason. The whole time we were chatting, it said that there were zero people watching, but people were leaving comments. And sometimes you need to have like a Facebook account or a YouTube account. So it's not perfect. I'm sorry about that. Alonzo, hey, shout out to Alonzo. Alonzo always shares my stuff. Thank you so much. Nah, hey, I like that. Nah, I'm not saving. I like it. Because you never know, like tomorrow may never come. So why save up? Like it. All right, some money is being set aside. All right, sin chao. Sin chao. That, isn't that high? Tambe. Yeah, I have a friend, uh, a student I practice uh, Vietnamese with. I only know two things. Sin chao. Oh my gosh. So Pablo lives in Argentina. And he's exactly right. In my country, it is not easy to save money because of inflation. 100%. 52 people watching right now. I see uh, 85 people watching now because I got um, a little bit from YouTube and a little bit from Facebook. So, yeah. Hey, don't forget to uh, hit that like button. All right, Cloud9. That would be a weather idiom. We are not talking about that one today. I saw that on a list, but to be honest, I don't think native English speakers use cloud nine that often. But if you ever hear that, hey, right now I'm on cloud nine, that just means somebody is really happy. And I think if you do say I'm on cloud nine to a native English speaker, they will know what you mean. Good idiom though. Mega, what's going on? Hope you're doing well. Can you imagine? I don't even, I don't even want to think about that. If it's raining cats or dogs, jeez. I'm pretty sure I would need a new roof because some of those dogs can get big. I don't, yes, I don't even want to, I don't even want to think about that. All right, Zapari, so saving up for a trip. Hmm. I wonder where you're going. Oh, so John from Brazil. Juan? Is that how you say John in Portuguese? Uh, we are going to Rio. We are going to Rio. And I would love to visit Christ the Redeemer, at least, and the beach. We are staying in Lemmy. No, no, Mahmoud. I don't need a new roof right now. I'm just saving up for when I do need a new roof. Probably within the next 10 years. Yeah. Yeah. It won't be fun. It won't be fun. All right. Back to the lesson because we have a, a few of these here. No, luckily, my roof, my mood is good. My brother's roof not so good. He had to buy a new roof last year. Yeah, it's not it's expensive. It's not fun. Right now we're going to talk about something a little bit better, and that is the sunshine. The sunshine, I wanted you to know that verb. So when the sun is out and there are no clouds around the sun, we say the sun is shining. That is the verb. You can also use the noun, the sunshine. The sunshine feels good on my face. Maybe it's been a little cold. The warm sun on your face might feel good. The sunshine feels good. Get that vitamin D. We also use rays. It is a noun. I don't know if you know this or not, but in that picture, 
those are sun rays. So those little lines of light that come from the sun, we call those rays. Now, some people in English, when they want to turn their skin darker, when they want to get a tan, you might hear them say, I'm going to catch some rays. That means they are going to try to darken their skin. They might get a little cancer that way. I don't know. Be careful if you want to get a suntan, but catch some rays. So here's the idiom. Come rain or shine. You might hear that in English. And that means no matter what happens, you are going to do that thing. So maybe you like these English lessons every Saturday. You might say, hey, come rain or shine, I will go to Brent's English lesson. I can't miss it. Come rain or shine. You might hear this. Hey, come rain or shine, I'll be there. Maybe your friend tells you they are getting married. And they might say, can you come to my wedding in June? I'll be there. Come rain or shine. Doesn't matter what happens. Could be raining. Could be shining. The sun might be shining. I'll be there. So that that's an idiom. It doesn't actually mean anything about the weather most times. It just means no matter what happens in my life, I am going to be there. I may have to take off work. I may have to spend a lot of money to get there. Maybe buy a plane ticket, but hey, come rain or shine, I'm gonna be there for you. I wouldn't miss it for the world. You might hear that idiom as well. It doesn't have anything to do with weather, but hey, come rain or shine, I'll be there. Hopefully that helps. Got another one for you. Again, more rain. I don't like this one as much because when you use this English idiom, it always means bad things are happening. Not very fun. When it rains, it pours. What does that mean? Well, when something bad happens, it often happens in large amounts or all at once. I have an example for you. Let's say you wake up late for work. Maybe your alarm didn't go off. There's some English phrasal verbs for you. And then on your way to work, maybe you're driving, you get a flat tire. And then when you get to work, a coworker has called out sick. So now you have twice the amount of work to do. You can say, oh, when it rains, it pours. So one bad thing, another bad thing, another bad thing, when it rains, it pours. So maybe we should talk a little bit about what it means when it's pouring out. Okay, and I have some pictures for you. So let's bring this picture here. This is the verb to pour. And you can see that somebody is taking water from a pitcher. That's a pitcher, the way it's spelled. We have a couple different pitchers in English, but that is one of them. And it holds liquid. It looks like that pitcher is holding, what do you think? Is that lemon juice? Probably not. It's probably orange juice. Yeah, that makes more sense. Even though those oranges look almost yellow. But I, I don't think anybody would want to drink lemon juice out of a pitcher. So let's call it orange juice. You may have a pitcher full of orange juice, and then you just pour it into a glass. And you can imagine if that is how the rain is coming out of the sky, it's raining a lot. So when it rains, it pours. 
that means you are having a lot of bad luck right in a row or all at once. When it rains, it pours. Let's check the chat here. Hopefully, hopefully everybody is having a good day, right? How bad could it be? Filippo, thank you so much for the super chat. I have a little something for you. And then I'll take a drink of water or take a drink of uh, this orange stuff. Filippo, thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Look at that. I took a drink. You didn't even see it. I was quick. Filippo, thank you so much. Oh my gosh. Hey, Brent, say hello to my coworker. Babakar? Mbaboy? Sorry if I said that wrong. Oh, he's here for the first time. Well, welcome. Welcome. Yeah, so Filippo, I know, I know Filippo works uh, on Saturdays. He just got off work, he told me, had a little lunch, and now he's settling down to listen to this English lesson. But I'm sure at Filippo's work, maybe Babacar calls out sick. Does, I, Babacar, I know, it's your first time here. I don't want to make you feel bad, but everybody gets sick. So let's say Filippo and Babacar are working together, but then Babacar has to go home. He gets sick. And maybe Filippo, he drives a forklift. Maybe he knocks over some boxes. So when it rains, it pours. His coworker went home. He messed up. He has twice the work to do. The boss get, gets mad when it rains, it pours. Poor Filippo. So I hope that never happens to you. But that is one way you could use when it rains, it pours. Just when bad luck starts happening over and over again. Sorry about that. I, hey, Algeria is in the house. Really? Lemon juice. Is that you? a big pitcher? Of lemon juice? I don't think those are lemons, though. It just looks yellow on the picture. To me, at least. It looks yellow. That would be very sour. So, yeah, those are pretty... That's... Maybe it's just the color of the picture. I think... Oh, pitcher. There's two types of pitchers in English. That is a picture of a picture. Like, English is weird. Right? English is weird. That's why so many people have trouble learning English. Sometimes it just doesn't make any sense. All right. We just talked about when it rains, it pours. So let's talk about this, a fair weather friend. Sometimes you will hear a fair weather fan. So let's talk about this. A fair weather f- friend is when someone is only a friend when things are going well, okay? But the second you need some help from your friend, they disappear. They're only there for you. They only support you when good things happen. But the second you need help, you need some encouragement, they're out of there. Fair weather friend, you don't want fair weather friends. Let's go back to Filippo. I'm going, I'm going to use him as an example and also Babacar. Now, hopefully they're coworkers and they're friends. Remember when Filippo knocked those boxes over by accident, by accident, I'm making this up. He didn't do that. But if Babacar is a good friend, he's going to be there for him when he's having some tough times, maybe Babacar will help him pick those boxes up. But if he's a fair weather friend, he might say, you're on your own for that one, pal. You are on your own. I'm going over here. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm not helping you out. But hey, if you want to buy me dinner later, I'll be there. That would be a fair weather friend. 
there for the good times, but when the times get tough, they leave. Babacar is not like that. Is it Filippo, please let us know in the chat. I have a feeling Babacar is a good guy, I think. Ah, good one there. A friend in need is a friend indeed. Lovely. Love it. That is the opposite of a fair weather friend. So when times get tough, your friend is there to help you. They're not a fair weather friend. I don't know. Lino, sounds like it's hot where you live. All right. Yeah, Mahmood, everything is good here. Everything's good here. There are a lot of uh, wildfires in Canada. So hopefully everybody is doing well there. My son right now is in New York, but the weather is better. Yeah, a couple days ago, I wanted to go down to New York. I almost took a bus. I was going to do an English lesson in the bad, the bad air, but it cleared up before. So I knew it was going to get better, so I didn't go down. But if it was still going to be smoky, I wanted to go down. It's about a six hour drive for me, but it cleared up. The air cleared up. It's an English phrasal verb you might hear, meaning it got better. It wasn't as smoky. So, but I think that would have been fun. Sorry for all of the trees burning in Canada and all the people who were coughing in New York on Wednesday, but the next day it got a little better. By Friday, it was almost completely gone. So, yeah, you are in the right place, Johnny Beck. Some idioms about hot weather. Whoop. Mm. Do I have? I don't know if I have any idioms for hot weather, but um, was it? Lino, I think, where is that one? It's not exactly an idiom, but this is good. Where was it? It's so hot. Yeah, Lino, thank you. This is uh, what we call a simile in English. So not exactly an idiom, but it's so hot you could fry an egg. Yeah. It's a good one to use. I don't know if it's exactly an idiom because the thing about an idiom means it makes no sense. Like raining cats and dogs. If you had never heard that before, what does cats and dogs falling from the sky have to do with raining hard? But at least with it's so hot you could fry an egg on the sidewalk, that kind of does make sense. But that's a good one to use. I don't know if I have a hot one coming up but let's talk about another one here find it for you we just talked about fair weather friend a fair weather fan it's the same thing but only talking about a sports team so if you are a fan of where I live a lot of people are fans of American football we just call it football but the New England Patriots, that's the team that is very popular where I live. And for the last 20 years, they have been very good. They have won a lot of championships. So a lot of people where I live love this team, the New England Patriots. But for the past two or three years, they haven't been very good. So there aren't as many fans of the New England Patriots around. A lot of fair weather fans. They will love the team as long as the team is winning, but as soon as that team starts losing, they're out of there. They don't watch the games. They don't go to the games. They don't buy the t-shirts anymore. It's too bad. Fair weather fans. There's a lot of them. How about this one? More rain. More rain. To rain on somebody's parade. That means you spoil or ruin somebody's plans or happiness. 
Do you know what a parade is? Think of a street. Think of a lot of people walking on that street. Some might be playing instruments. There might be a band walking. You might see somebody playing the drums. There might be some people dancing. It's a parade. Carnival in Brazil. It's a parade. Well, the idiom, rain on somebody's parade, it means somebody was having a good time and then you said something or did something to make them not have fun anymore. Have an example. Say my child. I have a couple of them. I have two children. And we are getting to the end of the school year. So report cards will be coming out any day now. And let's say one of my children gets all A's. They get really good grades. And they're very proud of that. They might say, hey, dad, look at this. Here's my report card. All very good grades. And I might say, yeah, that's fine. But you need to go clean your room. It's a mess. That would be very mean. I would rain on their parade. They were so proud to show me their good report card. And I just completely ruined their day. I rained on their parade. Yeah, that's fine, but uh, go clean your room. Who likes cleaning their room? Maybe some people, but I'd be mean. So I try not to rain on anybody's parade. Hopefully that helps. Let me know if that helps. Hang on. Mean is here. Welcome. Hopefully you're doing well in Canada. No shopping today, right? No shopping today. Oh no. Gotta go, Okran. But hope to see you on the replay. By the way, could you? Anybody watching? Anybody listening on replay, could you, could you hit the thumbs up? Maybe other people will find the English lesson. Subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do that. Let's see, sir. Yeah, no, Mega. I'm that would be that would be good, right? And to be honest, both of my students, both of my children are good students and um we try to we try to give them some good things when they do good work you know hey that's right my mood like and subscribe i need to be be a better youtuber i'm i might not say that enough yeah yeah hey my son he's 15 i don't i don't really care about him too much just kind of go off on your own son you should be fine now he's there with another family. So there are adults with him, but he's he's 16. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. All right. Welcome. Let's see how would you say? Emilio. Emilio Perez, welcome. Welcome. All right. Oh, Omran, thank you so much. Watch the video several times. I look, what, what? I look like I woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That's an idiom. That means that uh, you're, you're kind of mad. You're, yeah, that, if you woke up on the wrong side of the bed, that means you're mad. Hmm. Am I mad about anything today? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, uh, thank you. Best teacher I've ever seen. Well, that's nice. Nice. All right. I don't, I don't, my, my, my own children, they don't like it when I talk about them. Like, don't talk about me, dad. Yeah. So, but I have two children though. That's it. All right. Daniela, I am good. How are you? Let's go back to teaching, uh, oh, Pakistan. Love to go to Pakistan one day. All right, here we go. The next one, rain check. You might hear this in English. 
a rain check. We use it in a couple different ways. I just saw a mad emoji. Hmm. Somebody, no, is that Matt? Yeah, somebody left a mad emoji for me. Hmm. I wonder why. Rain check. To leave a rain check or to, to ask for a rain check or to request a rain check. So that means that something was supposed to happen, but for some reason you can't do it. And I do have some examples for you. So you might have to reschedule. If you see postpone, that doesn't mean cancel. Talk about baseball. It's hard to play baseball in the rain. So if there is a game scheduled for today and it's raining, the game will probably be postponed. That just means it will still happen but it will happen at a later date, postponed. So let's say you have a friend and they want you to go to that baseball game later in the week. You might say, hey, I'd love to go. I can't, can I get a rain check, okay? I'd love to go, but I can't this week. Can I get a rain check? And that just means right now, I am saying no, but that doesn't mean I never want to go. If you take a rain check, that means please ask me later. Let's plan for something later. I just can't go right now. So you might hear that. Can, can I take a rain check? That means I want to go. I can't this time. Can we go at a later date? Rain check. And sometimes in a store, you might take a rain check. So let's say that there is a sale on TVs or televisions at a store and it's a really good price and you want to buy that television. Maybe you saw it online, this store was having a sale. You go to the store and they say, ooh, we don't have any more of those televisions right now. Let me get you a rain check. And a rain check means that you can't buy the TV right now because they don't have any more TVs, but they will get more. And then you can come back to the store and still get the sale price. So even if the sale ends, because you have a little piece of paper that says you try to buy the TV when it was on sale, you will still get that price because they gave you a rain check. Hopefully that helps, a rain check. Let me know in the chat. Are you completely confused? Take a rain check. Hey, shout out to Teacher Mike. Yesterday, I said, I think everywhere, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, I would like to collab this summer because I will not be teaching at my school. I will have more time. I said, who, who are some of your favorite English teachers? Guess who? Guess who are some of your favorite English teachers? Bob the Canadian. I mean, come on. Who doesn't love Bob the Canadian? English teacher Mike, who doesn't love him? English with Lucy, very popular. Who else? English with Tiffany, I don't know her that well. I don't know her at all. I've never spoken to her. Speak English with Vanessa, spoken with her a couple times. So who knows? Maybe we will get some collabs going. Bob the Canadian, shout out to him. We might do it this summer. I don't know. Sometimes, can you speak fast and quick American English? Uh, yeah, if I sometimes get a little excited and I think I speak a little too quickly. So sometimes, sometimes. Yeah, Bob and Brent, that would be amazing. I think, I think it might happen. Tanya, welcome. 
AJ Hoag, I have never talked with him, but hey, who knows? Maybe. Seems like a he seems like a pretty big guy, right? AJ Hoag. I've heard of him though. I've heard of him. I think he, he's very popular, isn't he? New member, Omron. You've been a member already, I think, but whatever you did, you became a new member. So here you go. New member. New member. Make sure you check the members tab for the Discord, the members chat, and the bonus videos. Yeah, so just in case you don't know, Omron, I think you do, but there are bonus member videos, and I'm going to try to have members chats a lot this summer because I won't be working at my school. So maybe every Saturday before the live stream, we'll have a members chat just like we did today. So thank you for becoming a new member. All right. I like it. Whatever floats your boat. Yeah, whatever floats their boats. Hopefully... I'll, 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 I'll do a little talk and see if we can maybe get English teacher Mike on a live stream one day. That would be fun. I think that would be fun. You're right. I got a few more here for you. Not so many about the rain. Talk a little bit about snow. It looks like my internet I just got a little bit of an alert saying the internet is slow. Hopefully it's working okay for you right now. All right. So let's talk about the snowball effect. This can be a little tricky. So what I thought was, let me read something that is going to explain the snowball effect, but I think it will also help you understand it. And the good news is it's not that much of an idiom because once you hear it, I think it will make sense snowball effect. Sometimes it's not very fun, but I think it will make quite a bit of sense. So this is the snowball effect. Imagine you're playing in the snow on top of a big hill. You have a snowball in your hand and you decide to roll it down the hill. As the snowball rolls, it starts to get bigger because it collects more snow along the way. And the more snow it rolls, the more snow it picks up and it keeps getting bigger and bigger. When it reaches the bottom of the hill, it turns into a huge snowball. So the snowball effect means that something small can become really big when it keeps growing and collecting more and more of the same thing. Just like the snowball rolling down the hill, it gets bigger as it picks up more snow. So hopefully that makes sense. Snowball starts out small. And if the snow is sticky, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. A snowball effect. And one of the most common ways you will hear this is with credit card debt. Notice how I said that credit card debt. There is a B in debt for some reason, but it's silent. So a lot of college students in the United States get into trouble with this. When they go to college, they might be walking to class and there are people that will try to get them to get a credit card. A lot of students in the United States who are going to college struggle with money so they get a credit card and they charge some things on that credit card and what they owe their debt it's small but then it keeps growing and growing because of interest and so it keeps getting bigger and bigger snowball effect so it can be used in a bad way but how about this with English, the snowball effect can be good. So the more words you learn, the easier it is for you to understand English. So the snowball effect can be good sometimes. 
the more words you know, just keeps building and building. Hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. That's the snowball effect. Let's just check the chat. Oh, I've heard. I was talking with uh, Danny earlier. She is in France, but close to Germany. She said it was uh, really, really hot. Ah, sorry about that. It looks like for a while we had some bad video there. Hmm. Check in the chat. Make sure. By here. I'm doing well. Hopefully you're doing well. All right. Do I have... I, you're my Mauritanian friend, right? I do have quite a few friends who are Muslim. Quite a few students who are Muslim too. All right. Oh, Syria. Love it. Audi. Great. Um, oh, so how to teach English to kids. Yeah, because Audi teaches English to his grandchildren. Great way to learn English, teaching others. All right, we have a few more here. We just talked about the snowball effect. When something is bad and it gets bigger, or it could be something is good and it gets bigger. But how about this? To catch wind of something. Mm. Sometimes this happens with gossip. If you catch wind of something, let's say there is um, maybe going to be, what could you catch wind of? Mm. I had a I had a uh, an example of something that happened at my school, but I don't know how many people would know this. All right, yesterday at my school, we had a fire drill. And what happens in an American school when there is a fire drill, an alarm will go off and everybody will have to leave the building just to keep everybody safe, just in case there is a fire. Well, earlier in the day, I caught wind of somebody talking about a fire drill to teachers. So I didn't know it exactly, but then I went over, were you guys talking about a fire drill? Yeah, I think we're going to have one this afternoon. So it's always good to know when your school is going to have a fire drill just to get all of the papers that you need to have to bring out with you to, to make sure all of the students are safe. I have a list of students in my class. So if you catch wind of something, you kind of hear that something is going to happen. Could be gossip. Could be people whispering. Like, wait, what's going on? Maybe somebody is planning a surprise birthday party for you. Maybe your birthday is coming up and people are wanting to surprise you. They don't want you to know about this birthday party, but you catch wind of it somehow. Maybe you see an invitation. Maybe one of your friends slips up and says, oh, I'm coming to that part. Oh, no, no, never mind. Wait, what'd you say? What party? Nothing. Then you get suspicious. What do you mean? What party? You would catch wind of it. You would understand like something is happening. Maybe you shouldn't know about it. Catch wind of something. I hope that helps. Got more wind here for you. More wind idioms. Yeah, Tanya. Danny, Danny was the star of the members chat. It should be available to members if you want to watch on replay. Yeah, Mahmood. Yeah, I don't know what's happening on YouTube. I have, hey, I love the people who watch me on YouTube, but it is a little smaller. Yeah, YouTube's hard. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, one day it will blow up. I don't know, though. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, yeah. Oh, I would love to come to Dubai one day. I would love to. One of my favorite YouTubers, his name is Simon Wilson, and he did a no money challenge where he spent three days in Dubai with no money. It's good. I would love to go there. 
Ah, Steal My Thunder. That's not one I have planned. That's a good one to know, though. Steal My Thunder. It just means somebody... Let's see. How would, how would I explain this? Somebody is doing something great. But then somebody else comes and takes the attention away. Um, let's say there's a marriage. Two people are getting married. And one of the guests has had too much to drink. We're going to be talking about that in a minute. Wait, what's that? Let's see, what, we don't... Why, why, what, I don't know what this is. Probably I should like... That seems like spam to me. And the problem with... Um, I don't know. I don't think I can... Um, I don't think I can uh, block people on um, on Facebook. Okay. It's, it's always good though. So like Mahmood said earlier, do you, uh, do you hope, uh, yeah, whenever you have spammers, I think that's a good thing, right? That means you're becoming more popular. So thank you for spamming, but I don't want anybody to get in trouble with WhatsApp. I don't know about you, but anytime someone says, hey, what's your WhatsApp number? Like, uh, seems a little fishy. Seems like you can't quite tr trust them, right? Um, Steel Thunder, weren't we talking about that? Hang on. Omron, dropped super chat. Thank you so much. Got a little something for you, my friend. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, Omron. And I think the longer we go with the English lesson, the more quickly I speak. So if you do want me to speak a little more quickly, you're in luck because I think I start speaking more quickly towards the end of the lesson. Okay, we were talking about Steel Thunder. People are getting married. One of the guests gets a little drunk They've had too much to drink. They start talking really loudly during the ceremony. They would steal that couple's thunder. Like the spotlight is supposed to be on the people getting married. But everybody's looking at this fool talking really loudly during the ceremony. That person would be stealing the thunder of the couple married. Hopefully that helps. Now, let's talk about that person. <laughs> Please speak fast. Yeah, I do feel like I'm speaking a little quickly, which might be good for some people. That's right, I like it. Jealous. Those spammers are trying to steal my thunder. I'm trying to teach an English lesson here. All right. Um, we were going to talk about this. Three sheets to the wind. So, yeah. You might hear this in English. Three sheets to the wind. That wedding guest, you could say they were three sheets to the wind. They had had a little bit too much to drink. And I know there are some people in the chat who do not drink alcohol. Very good. You will never have to worry about being three sheets to the wind. And it is an idiom. I don't know where that comes from. It doesn't make any sense to me. I know you might have a sheet of paper. I know you might have a sheet on your bed. Three sheets to the wind? Doesn't make any sense. But if somebody is three sheets to the wind, that means they've been drinking a lot and they are drunk or heavily intoxicated pretty much means the same thing. And I think the video is messing up again. Sorry about that, Chris, speak fast. I don't want to speak too quickly. If you are watching on YouTube, the good thing about YouTube is on replay, you can speed me up. You can go from like one to 1 1.25 and I speak a little more quickly. If you are listening on the podcast, 
you can do the same thing. You can speed me up a little bit. Yes, alcohol to people who are Muslim is haram. Yeah, very bad. Very bad. All right. What about this one? I'm a little foggy on that. What do you mean? If you hear a native English speaker say they are a little foggy on something, it means they don't quite understand. They need some more detail. So let's look at this. Maybe you have plans with your friend, but you don't know all of the details. Maybe you don't know what time it starts. Maybe you don't know where you're supposed to meet. Maybe you don't know how long the event is going to last. Say, I'm a little foggy about what is going to happen tomorrow. When are we supposed to meet? So if you're a little foggy, that means you don't quite understand. And if you don't know what fog is, if you've seen any of the pictures from New York this past week, it was pretty foggy there. It's like smoke. Smoke and fog, they look very similar. Fog is mostly water though. I'm, I'm a little foggy. Can you fill me in on some of the details? There's an English phrasal verb there. So if you were a little foggy about something, you don't know all the details, there are some blank spots, you want someone to fill you in on that stuff. All right. That is the English lesson on weather idioms. I hope now your English is a little bit better. I hope when native English speakers speak and they use these idioms, you're like, ooh, I know what you're talking about. And maybe one day you will be able to use these idioms in your next conversation. Maybe you already can. Hopefully I've taught you at least one new one. So before we go, would like to say goodbye to a couple people. <laughs> I don't want to talk about Andrew Tate, that's for sure. I don't, yo, I want, hey, Chris, anytime. Like a Chris would like me to pronounce huge like Trump. Huge, gonna be huge. It looks like Trump is in some, uh, some hot water. Looks like he's in a little bit of trouble. Gonna be huge, gonna be huge. Love it. Thank you for asking. Very happy to do that. All right, Thomas. Okay, so let's learn the English idiom, rub it in. Rub it in. If somebody rubs it in, that means they are having a good time and you are not, and they want to remind you about it. So Thomas, thank you for being a channel member. He's going back to the pool. Well, I don't have a pool. After this lesson, I am probably going to mow my lawn, unless it's too rainy. So Thomas has a pool. I would say he's rubbing it in. I don't have a pool. You're reminding me that you're going back to the pool. Okay, well, I don't want to keep you here. Don't want to keep you here. Oh, man. Filippo, I forgot. Members only, I forgot. But, all right. Zig? Zig left a comment way before this even started. So I'm pretty sure I will be doing a live stream next week. It's next Saturday. Mega, thank you so much. I might go to, um, I'm not I'm not getting into politics. I shrugged you off. I didn't know that. I shrugged you off. Sorry about that. Nailed it. Thank you, Mahmood. Thank you. All right, Omron. Good lesson. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah, Mahmood. Hopefully I won't find any snakes. It might be too rainy, which won't hurt my feelings. If I don't have to mow the lawn today, but we'll see. But I think next Saturday there will be a live stream and it should be at about the same time. I might be going to a concert the night before. So maybe I'll be a little bit 
a little bit sleepy, but we'll see. Yulia, thank you. Tanya, have a good weekend. Yulia, did I say goodbye to Yulia already? All right. Obner, thank you. Where is Bob the Canadian one? I don't know. I don't think he's going. He went live yesterday. I watched some of his live stream. I think it was things that were inside other things. It's a good one. Check that out. All right. I must go. Lino, thank you so much. Chris, thank you. Freddie, see ya. Ciao. Presto. See you later, Filippo. Audi, have a good one. See you next week. Maybe in the middle of the week, there will be another English lesson. I think on feet. Yeah, feet, foot, foot of the bed. We use feet in so many different ways. Thank you so much.